Hello, this is Malcolm Bowden. In this talk, I want to look at the evidence that the Earth and the Universe are not billions of years old. In a previous talk, I showed how the evolutionists billions of years depended on one method only, radiometric dating. But this could be reduced to a few thousand years when the decrease in the speed of light was taken into account. In this talk I want to give you some of the other evidence that shows that the Earth and the Universe are young. Now there are many ways of trying to give a date for the creation of the Earth, but varying accuracy and wide range of results uh, take place. They range from a few million to a few thousand years. But these are all too short for evolution to have taken place by random mutations. These require hundreds of millions of years to take place. In fact, even the billions of years claimed by evolutionists are still not long enough to allow the phenomenal complexity of life to arise by pure chance. In fact, there was a conference in Chicago several years ago in which mathematicians pointed out to the evolutionists that even the four and a half billion years they claim the Earth has existed is still not long enough for evolution to have taken place by chance. And in that debate there were some very heated exchanges when evolutionists tried to defend their theory. So not only is the physical evidence against them, but the mathematics is also. I will start with one piece of evidence that gives a clear indication that the Earth is only a few thousand years old. And that is the decrease in the Earth's magnetic field. This magnetic field has been known and used for centuries by explorers for compass directions. It is generally being considered to be created by electrical currents that circulate around the Earth roughly around the line of the equator. And it is this, this current that generates the magnetic field we know. In 1835, the scientist Gauss collected data of its strength from around the world and concluded that it was equivalent to a large magnet in the centre of the Earth with a power of 8.56 and I'll just use the word units. These were the current that was flowing around the Earth. This magnetic field has been measured many times since and there has been a steady decrease to 8 units by 1970 and it is still decreasing. If it is due to electrical current there is no it is known to how it decreases. It decreases on that same flattened curve that I have talk, talked about before an exponential curve that as it descends it gets flatter and flatter. It flattens out until it re almost reaches a steady state. It is a well-known mathematical curve and the curve can be extended mathematically backwards into the past to see how strong the electrical currents would have been in past years. In 10,000 years or more in the past it would have reached the power of a magnetic star. The current would be very high and it would heat the earth and life would be impossible. So we can say that if it is less than some 10,000 years, it means the Earth may be perhaps something like 6,000 years, which is in accordance with the biblical age of the Earth. The problem for evolutionists is that once this current has reached zero, electrical currents have no means of starting up again. Evolutionists try to overcome this using a dynamo theory that is the circulation of material in the liquid core but they have great difficulty in proving this. 
Another reason they try to put forward is that we are in a reversal period of the magnetic field that seems to have flipped many times in the past. I do not accept that these are true reversals of the whole of the Earth's magnetic field, but are due to more local disturbances due to rock movements, etc. So the decrease of the strength of the magnetic field around the Earth indicates a young age for the Earth. Another uh, feature is the shrinkage of the Sun. Now astronomers daily record very accurate observations of the Sun as it crosses the Greenwich Meridian because it is the basis of our time system throughout the world. Do you get the time when the centre of the Sun crosses the meridian? They take the time when the Sun first touches the north-south line in the telescope and the time when the other side of it is just leaving the vertical line. And so the time halfway between those two times is when the Sun's centre is on the meridian. Now experts have looked at these records and they have been recorded since 1836 and they took the records up to 1953 and when they looked at these records they found that the time lapse between the arrival of the Sun on one side and its departure from the other side of the uh, central line was gradually getting less and they worked out that the Sun was shrinking 0.1% of its diameter every century they checked this by going to the Naval Observatory in North Washington, D.C. and their figures confirmed these same readings. Now extrapolating this amount of shrinkage back showed that in 100,000 years it would have twice the present diameter and because if it was, if it was that size life could not possibly exist on this earth. Evolutionists have tried desperately to overcome this with various articles in prestigious journals. When I tried to find the original paper in order to see what was actually said by the original investigators, to my amazement I found that the original paper had never ever been published. Obviously the information it contained was so devastating to evolutionist theory and the time scale that they required that they kept that original paper from the general public. And so the shrinkage of the Sun would not give time for evolution to have taken place in the distant past. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for listening.